Christine Horn, and welcome to Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I'm Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. I am live on Instagram. I am live on Facebook. Listen, this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread. This is episode 166, y'all. 166. So if this is your first time watching, I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. Oh, man. So I'm getting ready to do a podcast interview, but it's like through Skype. So I was like, let me beat my face just in case. No trick bags. Like they may use that footage for something. Um, and I was like, let me go live. I haven't gone live this week. Um, but today I want to talk about something that's been coming up <laughs> with my, some of my inner circle member clients is how to prep for vacation as an actor. So that's what we're talking about today. Hey, Neil. Congrats, Neil, one of my Booking Magnet Academy members. Congrats on your new booking. Hey, Risha. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Tori. Hey, Sarah. So listen, let's get into it. So no, okay. I'm going to just back up with a little story. So every other Monday, I, um, if you're new to me, I have a monthly membership called the Booking Magnet Academy, okay? That's, I have actors from around the world who are in it, and we talk live on a, like a Q&A call every other Monday. And on this last call we had this past Monday, I was telling some clients, like, okay, you're in the process of moving. Get ready, because it's going to be busy. Like, just as soon as your life is hectic, like, something's going to come up for you. And what that can totally throw you off. And so I was telling the same thing to some other clients. I was like, you're about to go on vacation. This is summertime. We're all traveling, right? And we're thinking, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, I just did that myself. I went to a retreat in Portland, Oregon uh, two weekends ago. And I was like, I'm just going to go focus on this thing. And so I want to really talk about, you know, what we call Actors Murphy's Law and really how to how to prep for it. And one of my clients, I had two clients email me in the past two days and one today, which tickled me, which made me talk about it today, because you may be catching yourself saying the same thing. So here is the fact. So it may have been really slow for you lately. It, you may be in a season where there's no auditions or nothing's really happening. So you say, self, this is a great time to do X. This is a great time to travel. Or this is a great time to, I don't know, do anything else besides like be ready. And I'm here to tell you, when, <laughs> when you make the decision to do something else, to concentrate on something else, I promise you that is when opportunities come in. It is just, it's this whole thing of work begets work. Like you put energy out. It's like, okay, let's, can we get real? It's like when you, when you dating somebody, when you're playing the fields, right? You're not settled on anybody, right? You play in the field and you giving the you giving the dude or the girl too much attention at first. You like, did they call? Did they call? You checking your text message? Did they call? And then you know what? I ain't calling him. I ain't calling her. She gonna have to call me, right? And so you got you go on some other dates or you start doing other stuff. You start hanging out with your friend. And what always happens, right? As soon as you start paying that dude or that girl the attention, all of a sudden they blowing your phone up. And you like, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> So the same thing, and you know, that's when you make them wait. You'd be like, mm. but it's the same thing with our acting careers and with anything. It's like when you stop giving it like so much attention, like obsession and live your life and do other things, that is when opportunities start to come, right? People start to call you out, out the blue. So there's a two ways to deal with this. You can keep pretending to be shocked every time it happens. So that's what happened to two of my clients. One, I swear on Monday, and anybody who's in my Booking Magnet Academy, you're Jasmine, Wendy, you guys heard this. Stephanie, I said, I won't say her name. I told this one woman on the call, I said, you're in the middle of moving. Things are busy, hectic in your personal life. I want you to be ready for things to show up. And she's like, okay, okay. And sure enough, she emails me yesterday. She's like, oh my God, I got all these auditions came in. This agent called me like, <laughs> and then I had another client today who's in Jamaica. She emails me from Jamaica and is like, Christine, I just got this huge audition for this huge TV show and I'm in Jamaica. You know, I was like, and I said, did I not warn you? Did I not prep you? 
as your coach? Did I not prep you? And here's the rub. And this is why I came live tonight. And this was powerful to me. She said, yes, you did tell me. Hey, Wendy, you did warn me. Hey, Farah. Hey, Dwan. She said, you did, but I didn't think that would happen to me. I didn't think that would happen to me. Christine, I hear you talking about these opportunities. I hear you talking about, yeah, as soon as I book a trip, as soon as I do this, this will happen. But I thought you were talking to somebody else. And it really made me think, not just, oh, be prepared, pack a little mini self-tape kit, you know, whatever, right? That happened to me and Dwan. shout out to Dwan Johnson from Think Bigger Coaching. We were in Portland at a retreat. And I was like, I'm not even focused. I'm going to be doing this. And by the end of the day, he had ordered a light for me and it was this whole thing. But it's the intention of, ex it's the expectation that I'm more concerned about. So I want to speak into your spirit tonight is to raise your expectations of what is possible for your career and what can happen. Just because it may have been slow for a while or you may have been sitting at home for two months, this is just the way it works. So I'm telling you, plan for anything. Plan, expect the best. Expect your phone to ring as soon as you leave. That's why we keep an audition kit. That's why we keep extra headshots, extra, in my, in my you know, when I go, when I typically travel, like I was just in Atlanta last week, where I was there for like five, six days. I brought my whole ring light. I was like, nope, not again. I'm bringing everything. <laughs> and sometimes you need it and sometimes you don't. But it, it really is more about the expectation. <laughs> Jasmine said, maybe you need to go on vacation. Listen, sometimes the way to get booked is to book yourself. You might need to, I, I said this the other day, you may need to just book, book something cheap. Like book a hotel, book a... The, a, a plane ticket to somewhere that's an hour away, honey. Like, just book something. Put something in the in the universe that says, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But why do we think that it won't happen to us? You are just as worthy. You know, things can come into alignment. So I, I'm, I have one more thing I want to say about this. Before I do, just as a little housekeeping for those of you on Instagram and Facebook, listen, I am teaching all, aside from my book coming out next week, ah, August 1st. You know, we'll talk more about that. It's called Playing Small, The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet, August 1st. Um, but aside from that, August 24th, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia at the Bronze Lens Film Festival. I will be teaching all day to a lucky group of actors. Whoever shows up, who, whoever is meant to be there, I'm so excited. And this is their 10 year anniversary, so I'm extremely honored to be a part of this festival. But in addition to that, Bronze Lens has created a special link, a special discount code just for my community. So if you're watching me on Facebook, just click the link in above or below. Instagram, the link in my bio, and you'll see Bronze Lens. And you can get all the link details, all the discounts. But that ends August 1st. So I just want to put that little bug in your ear. So we're going to be talking about the first half of the day is all about the business of acting. So even if you're a current client of mine, we're going to go deeper. We can build upon the stuff we've been working on. If you're new to me, your mind is going to be blown and that's okay. And after lunch, we're going to have a working lunch. And after lunch, we're going to do self tapes and scene study and all kinds of fun stuff. So that is that. I just want to make sure you guys know about that because that is really, really huge. And I'm the bronze lens film, bronze lens film festival is just so well respected and received. And I'm just really honored to be a part of it. Um, <laughs> Jasmine says, yes, book. Um, shout out to Farah, Farah Lopez Farrah, at Farah for real on Instagram. She's one of my inner circle member clients. Hey, Farah, calling you out. She, I'm so proud of you because she just just released her new web series called Farrah's Morning Dump, which is just got released yesterday. So check her out on, on Instagram at Farrah's Morning, at Farrah for real. You know, anybody that works with me in my inner circle, we are working on content creation and creating your own way. I'm going to be working on my new series after the book gets launched. I got to get that done first. Shout out to Sheena Faust, who's in my inner circle, who has her, her series, Why Am I Still Single? Um, as she sets the stage on Instagram. Shout out to Dawn Bina, who, who launched her new series on YouTube. So all my singers out there, she's got some great stuff. Her page is It Just Dawned On Me. So we're doing some great things around here and I'm really, really grateful. But you know what, I, that's all I wanted to talk about today, but I would love to take a couple of questions. Um, my interview is not for another 30 minutes. So I usually will schedule it asking me anything. 
But I'm cute. You cute. We here. Let's just talk. I'll give y'all another 10 minutes. <laughs> Come on, Instagram, Facebook. What questions y'all got? Literally, you can ask me, you can ask me anything, and I may or may not answer it. What's on your mind, guys? Y'all. Come on. Let me see these comments. Okay. Sarah Faye. Hey, Sarah Faye. Um, she says, but when you are prepped, it doesn't happen. When you actually let go, you give room for it to come in. Oh, so, so Sarah's talking about like, oh, I'm prepping for something to come, but then it doesn't happen. But then when I'm not prepped and I'm just releasing it, that's when things come. I agree and I disagree with you. Yes, Lord knows. There's been many times where I didn't pack. I mean, it just happened to me two weeks ago in Portland. Dwan Johnson can attest to that. He was with me. I was like, no, I'm just going to be present at this retreat and I'm just going to focus on my, my work. And then three auditions came in but i have also gone out of town many times and have already scoped out the self-tape studios in town because i just know me i know how things roll for me so i think that could easily fall into why get my um, um why get my hopes up moment a little bit if we're like oh i'm not gonna pack anything because when i do nothing happens i think that's a belief and i think that's a story i don't think i don't i don't have proof for that so i would rather prep again it's about setting expectations i expect the best when i went to atlanta i expected to have auditions so i packed different my usual go-to clothes I made sure I had a blazer. I made sure I had my security out, security person outfit. I just made sure I had certain staples that should just always stay in my in my carry on bags. Um, and something did come up, but I chose not to do it. Um, so yeah, I think it's just about how you want to look at it. I I'm going to make the choice because I would rather be prepared than not. And if I I believe again, I'm a booking magnet. I believe in law of attraction. So. I believe we don't know what's in the works behind the scenes. I don't think the universe is just responding to like, oh, she's not prepared, let's give it to her now. I think there's a, there is a release, but I do feel you, there is a release that just should be happening constantly with you from this career. The career isn't going anywhere. You know, another thing about acting and actors in vacation is, you know, we are, the fear of God is put into us at all times so many times. Hi, Melanie. Shout out to the Actors Lounge podcast. Um, sometimes the fear of God is put into us like, don't travel. This is episodic. It's pilot season, <laughs> right? It's the end is before the holiday. It's like, dude, where can I just live my life? This, this is what I do for a living. For some of you, this is a goal that you want to have to do this for a living. So you have to live your life. And that also means Christine packs her wigs. Christine packs her camera and her baby ring light. Because I don't miss no checks. <laughs> and it doesn't mean I'm going to take everything, but I also can't be held hostage to my career. And many of you feel like you're held hostage to it. And I know that feeling. Um, <laughs> bye, Farah. I'm just taking questions. If anybody has any thoughts, comments, concerns, I'm just, I already, I already gave my word for the night. If you missed any part of this, the replay will happen. Again, this is episode 166 of Actors Daily Bread. I'm Christine Horn. And uh, you can binge me on YouTube if you like and take your acting career to the next level. Um, hey, William Jefferson Jr. He says, just want to thank you for your inspiration. In your videos, I tell people all the time to watch you on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be joining Booking Magnet Academy soon. Thank you, William. Listen, the sooner you join, the sooner you'll start booking. And I know you just booked a few gigs, but I will take your career to the... But you can keep waiting if you want to. <laughs> you can wait if you want to, or you can get that 20, borrow $27 from a friend. Or don't go out to dinner with your friends this weekend and come work with me. Okay? Jasmine says, how did you feel when you were cast for your first co-star or and or guest star roles? How did that affect you on set? I'm about to get a co-star, so I'm prepping myself. Oh, right, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to speak. I'll speak to both for you, Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine Shanice in Dallas. Um, 
we inter I interviewed you in my after success story, so you can hear her story. And if, for those of you in Texas, if you want some inspiration, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, the first co-star, to be totally honest, I would literally have to look at my IMDb because I don't remember what my first co-star was at this point. But I will say, and this is for all of you who haven't had the, your first network co-star yet, it is that it's the hardest one to get. And like, as soon as you get it, then you've proven to everybody else, okay, you you can do it. <laughs> you can act on TV and the bookings from there get easier. I'm just gonna put that in into this head of all of you. The bookings do get easier. You prove to yourself, I can do it. A confidence brews up in you. You start bringing that confidence into every other audition. It's just like, it, it's this ripple effect. Um, so I, the, I, again, I'd have to look at my IMDb and I don't have it in front of me, but I do remember just feeling like, finally, <laughs> finally, Wendy, I see you. I'll come back. I'll come, come back to you, you know? So, but I'll speak to the big guest star. And this is kind of like apropos, apropos for, um, you know, some of you have seen the new trailer for the Harriet, new Harriet Tubman movie with Cynthia Ervio. Ur Hope I'm saying her name right. So I booked guest stars before playing Harriet Tubman on Timeless. If you didn't see me, there's, I think it's still on Hulu. There's a, there was a sci-fi show called Timeless and I got the opportunity to play Harriet Tubman. And I originally, I had gotten to the to producers for Underground. And then of course my girl Aisha booked it, which is, killed it, right? But though I had booked other guest stars before that, something about the Harriet Tubman one was like, whoa. Like I knew, A, I auditioned up against some amazing talent, but what got me, Jasmine, to answer your question, I didn't realize how big the role was until I was at the table read. The audition, we just read like three small snippets, three small scenes. And when I got to the table read and I was on the lot, I did, and to, sh to let you know I'm not, I'm, this is real. If you go to my YouTube channel, and I don't remember what number it is, but there was a video I did called Graduation, or I Graduated, or something like that. And I had a little beret, black beret on, my black coat, and I was in the parking lot, like, praising God and, like, crying because I had just left the table read I, and I couldn't even share what it was at the time. So now you have extra insight. I, I didn't realize how big, I, you know, I got there early as you should when you're invited to a table read. I got there early so I could highlight my lines, tag the pages, because when you're doing a table read, you really wanna show up and because you got a whole table of people looking at you, producers, you know, and other staff and other cast. And I'm like turning like me again, me again, me again, me again. And I was like, shh this is a huge role. <laughs> and that was a moment, Jasmine. That was just like, God, yes. Someone has given me an opportunity for me to really shine. I knew what I had when I did the one-liner co-star. I knew what was in me. I knew what I've been working toward, right? I'm sure some of you feel that. Can I get a yes in the comments if you, if you can relate to that? You know what you got in here. You know what you got up here. What kind of talent is brewing? And you trying to fight to say, uh, uh, may I help you, sir? <laughs> and you can't seem to book a can I help you, sir? Raleigh, you like, do you know who I am? Right? Can I get a yes, Marilyn? Yes. You know? Um, so for me, it was just that moment of about time. <laughs> and not like in a cocky way, just like, yes. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. More of this. <laughs> And so that was a pivotal one for me, A, because I got to put my, put my little bit of Lowry's on Harriet Tubman and, and go down in history as one of the Harriets in Hollywood. But to know that, ooh, only better can come from this. Only better can come from this. And for those of you who are working with me, either one-on-one -on -one or in my Booking Magnet Academy, that's the stuff I'm challenging myself and all of you because I waited a long time for that role and now I'm in a place and a position where I really want to create that next thing for myself. And I want to challenge anyone who's listening to do that for yourself as well. Waiting just sucks. The wait and hope plan is horrible. So I would like to create my next big yes, my next big yes, this is what I can do. You didn't know? And that's gonna be up to me.
because if I wait for Hollywood to tell me what I'm capable of, I'll be waiting a very long time. Great question, uh, Jasmine. Um, Wendy, I know you, I'm coming back to Instagram. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook. If you're just joining us, this is Actors Daily Bread. This is Actors Daily Bread, the best show for actors online. I, I would say, <laughs> humble brag, not even humble at all. Shout out to Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I'm just kind of taking open questions and thoughts. Um, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm gonna go to fa Instagram. Hi, Wendy. Well, shout out to Wendy from the Cayman Islands who I got to meet in Los Angeles when she came up to do her BET uh, audition. Uh, Wendy says, I know you may have spoken about this already, but if there is there a specific casting director, if there is a specific casting director that I would like to reach out to and ask to audition for a film that they are working on, is it a no-no? Is the casting director currently casting something? I need, I need a little bit more information. So I'll answer it two ways. I'll answer it two ways with the story. That's what my coach would tell me to do. So I've often shared the story of my homeboy, Nigel Thatch, shout out to him. He heard about the movie Selma being in pre-production. Ava DuVernay was gonna be directing it. He heard about that. He did his research. He knew that Ava DuVernay was very active on Twitter. The funny thing about this story is at the time, he was not a very social guy. I think, I, I dare say he had a flip phone. Like, I don't even think, like, he wasn't that dude. But he did his research, and he was like, yo, I would make a damn good Malcolm X, right? And this is Ava DuVernay telling the story, okay? He didn't tell me the story. I heard about it online. And I was like, that's my old boy, ah! So... He's dressed up as Malcolm X, got the glasses, got a suit, got whatever. And he sent, my phone is telling me I have a podcast interview. I know we still got 30 minutes. Um, he's dressed up as Malcolm X, sent her a picture and a tweet because he knew she was active on Twitter and said, I am the one. And Ava DuVernay out of her own mouth said, indeed he was. She granted him an audition. And if you happen to see Selma, he played Malcolm X. So I, if you know you are right for something, like a, not just, oh, I heard you're casting this movie. So here's the other way I'm gonna answer this. There's always a cast director or casting something that you heard about. I mean, there's a couple of projects right now, that I, right now that I'm like reaching out to my team about, hey, do we know about this? Who's casting this? But I personally don't approach casting directors like, hi, I like to audition for your film. I like to audition for your film. I'm a believer in what I teach all of my students in my Booking Magnet Academy in my inner circle is to build relationships. And just like if you just met me today, you shouldn't be asking me for something off the bat. Like, let me get to know you first. And look, real talk, it happens to me on Facebook and Instagram. Somebody texted me yesterday on Instagram, DM was like, can you help me find an agent? I heard you were an agent. I'm like, pause not an agent, number one. And who, who are you? What's your name? I Like that whole like, gimme, gimme, gimme before you have even fully introduced yourself, it just feels slimy. And that is why I, don't t I teach love-based marketing. And the, and the reason why some actors don't like it, and I'm not saying you don't, Wendy, because you've been rocking with me. The reason why some don't like it is because it's, it's not a quick pill. It's not a quick fix. People just want what they want and they want it now. And I, people feel that. And it just puts your, make you put your guard up. Like, hell, every actor wants to work with me. I'm one of the hottest casting directors. I'm casting a big project. But had you taken the time and played the long game and let me become a fan of yours and kept me in the loop of your career and your career growth and what you're doing, you will just be top of mind, period. But you being like, hey, can you, can you, can you, can you? It will, is not always received this, the same way. So I hope that gives you an answer. Let me know in the comments if I'm making sense, um, if I'm resonating with you on Facebook and on Instagram. So there's two ways to take it. There may be something you know you are just right for. I look like that person, you know, especially if it's based on a true story, or this is someone who sold my essence. Oh, I can kill this. Shout out to one of my clients, Risha, who saw something she knew she was right for, saw it on what, Show Facts or Sides Express, 
and took a chance. She did some of the stuff we, we teach in the Bookie Magnet Academy. She stepped out on faith and was like, yo, I am right for this. She didn't say it like that. But fast forward, she booked it by submitting herself because she knew who she was. Some of you, and I'm gonna step on some toes, don't know who you are. You think you're every man or every woman, but you're not. So then you're submitting to too many things and casting's like, you're not even right for this. And the, if casting feels like you don't know yourself, they're gonna just pause on you. Maybe the comments have slowed down. Maybe my computer's frozen. I just, are you with me? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I'll wait till I get a comment. I feel like I'm talking to myself. My computer must be frozen. Okay. William said hitting all the marks. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, it's got kind of quiet in here. I only hang out when I feel like the energy's high. So I'm going to go have a great night and I'll see you next time. Bye.